Okay, well, welcome everybody again. Here we are on um, another of our Viva Connection sessions. And these are sessions that we've been um, recording with speakers that for our Viva event 2019, we wanted to give you something of value. So we've been asking each speaker a pretty commonly asked question in the community. And, and we've been absolutely enjoying it. So and I have been loving having these conversations or not, in, they're not conversations, listening, just listening to, to the wisdom that pours out of their mouths, I guess. So I'm going to, I'm going to pass over the mic to Sue as I always do, as she's going to introduce us to our guest today. So our guest today, Linda Pettit, welcome a thousand times. Uh, we're delighted to speak to you today and we're delighted that you're coming to sunny Albia to join the Viva Fun. Um, you are a counselling psychologist um, who's always been interested in the spiritual nature of the three principles. Um, and it, it's no surprise that the course that you, you are currently running and are continuing to run is Life is Spiritual Theatre. And that is for women. But I know you do work across the board with individuals and groups and you work with Dr. Bill Pettit, your husband. Um, so, you know, you have a lot of experience and in wide and diverse areas. So that's, that's enough of that. But just in case, I would like to say your website is thedoctorspettit.com and that is spelled T-H-E-D-R-S-P-E-T-T-I-T.com because it's one of those names. I have a name that's similar. Well, it's not similar to that, but I have a lot of misspellings of my name, so uh, I th I'm just going to put that out there. Our question for you today, Linda, is how did you introduce an understanding of the three principles into your psychology practice? Well, uh, I'm happy to answer that. And first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here. And I'm really looking forward to being in Spain with you and all your beautiful family of guests. <laughs> and boy, you really nailed that introduction so you listened very well <laughs> okay. Good. so it maybe it would just help to tell a little bit of my story because i i think the true answer to that question how do you integrate the three principles into a psychology practice is going to be different from person to person and i think the best advice is to listen within and to be guided from within about what makes sense to you to do but when I, um, when I met Bill, I was, uh, I'd been in practice as a psychotherapist for 25 years, and I was doing primarily cognitive therapies and Jungian therapy. So I did a lot of dream analytic work. And, uh, but I was just really aware that people were not, they were not getting better as deeply and as quickly as I had hoped they would uh, as someone who really wanted in my heart to help people out of their stress and distress. And actually, I had decided to leave my psychotherapy practice and had become a coach uh, back when coaching was just getting started. So I was doing life coaching. And I met Bill and I began to learn about the three principles and I can't say that I was a quick study and I can't say that I took it to heart right away. In fact, I didn't. My ego quicked up, kicked up quite a fuss <laughs> and I, I just, I couldn't see really deeply what it was pointing to. But there was a point where it just started to make sense to me and, and what struck me is as a person who's kind of lived her life very intuitively, kind of by my gut, the, the thing that began to touch me was that I couldn't dispute the logic of the principles. And so I would watch my mind and I would say, well, does, do the three principles explain that experience? Do they explain that experience? Do they explain what happened here? And I, I couldn't find any exception. And I had the great good fortune to be married to Bill Pettit, who had been mentored by Sidney Banks for over at that point, probably 25 years. So Sid would call us uh, about every other Sunday, or we would call him, and, and we'd put him on speakerphone, and we would just sit, and he would talk to us, just share with us about the three principles. And 
I loved what he said. He, he would speak about the great allness and the great nothingness and the great isness and very deep spiritual teachings, which really touched me. But analytically, it was hard for me to make sense of that. And then there came a point where I just thought, you know, I, I really, oh, I know what happened. I started going to conferences and I would meet people at conferences who had recovered from, found their health after years and years of struggle with mental illness and carrying many diagnoses. And in fact, one of the first conferences I went to, I was, I was I, as a psychologist, I was deeply shocked because there was a man sitting next to me. I, I, I leaned over to introduce myself to him, and I realized very quickly that he was talking to voices in his head, and, and he was in a delusion. And, and I was shaken because I thought, oh my gosh, this is the first conference that I've ever been at as, as a psychologist where the persons I'm sitting next to are, they are the people that I usually am treating. And that was very different. And I was, I, I was shaken up by that. I didn't know what to think about that. But I could quickly see that the principal sort of leveled the playing field in that they were pointing to that all human beings are exactly the same. We're all ex creating our experience in the exact same way. And that touched me too. It was, there was something very beautiful about that. So I finally came to a point where I said to Sid, thanks. I said, Sid, I... I'm going to reopen my psychotherapy practice. I have the option to do that. It meant driving 125 miles south of where I was living at the time. But I had called my friend who owned the practice and said, hey, I think I want to come back into business with you. And she said, great. I said, so Sid, I'm going to go into practice and I really want to give this a go. So I am going to commit myself to not sharing anything but the three principles. And he said to me, that's a really wise thing. And, and I said, well, but the other thing I'm concerned about is that I don't think I see very much. I, when I listen to other people teaching the three principles, it seems like their metaphors are so much richer and deeper than mine. And, and he said to me, well, dearie, uh, tell me what you see. And so I shared with him kind of tentatively <laughs> one of the metaphors that worked for me. And, and he said, this was so sweet. He said, oh, Oh dear, you don't see very much. But he didn't say that in a judgmental way. I did not feel judged at all. It was just very matter of fact, very neutral, very loving. He said, and you see plenty. And the important thing is just that you share what you see. That if you try to share more than what you see about these three principles, people will know you're not telling the truth because truth knows truth. And so if you just share what you see, it will go straight into their hearts. And, and then he said this other thing that was really interesting to me at the time. I didn't understand it. But he said, what people need is so little. It's so little. And then they're off on an entirely different trajectory. Now, he didn't use that word, but they're just off on a different path. And, and he gave me some examples. And so I thought, oh, I can do this. I can just share what I see. But I was very skeptical, and I did not want to hurt anybody. And so I thought, well, I'm going to test this out as the practitioner scientist I was trained to be. So I am going to uh, make sure that with every client, I give them some objective instruments to assess where they're at when we start and how they improve. And so I used the... Um, Beck scales, the Beck depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive scales. I use something called the OQ42, which is a symptom checklist. And I would have every new client complete that and then complete it every third visit. And really, that was what catapulted me over the edge because I could see that people were getting better. They were accessing their health so much faster and so much deeper than any than with anything else I had ever done before. And, and, and I never looked back. I never shared, again, anything else as a therapist uh, beyond the three principles understanding because of that. I thought, well, 
this just, for whatever reason, this just works a lot faster and it's more effective. And that was enough for me. I just wanted to help people out of their suffering. The other thing Sid said to me that was really helpful is he said, <laughs> again, it was very humbling. Because you don't see a, a lot yet, uh, don't be surprised that when you do share what you see that people jump right past you. And, and that's a beautiful thing because if you listen to where they go, you'll go further too. And, and he, oh my God, that was so true. The first time I shared the three principles, the very first time, using my very rudimentary metaphor to try to point to what I was seeing, <clears throat> I watched that client jump somewhere so quickly with it, and then I became, in a sense, her student. I just said, well, you know, tell, tell me what happened. Tell me what you see. Tell me what, what shifted. And she told me. And, and then I was able to see more in that direction. And that's what I began to love about it, that it was, it was this incredible therapy change to me, to this incredible conversation with people just about life and how we're all doing life. And it was very healing for me, and it was very healing for the people I worked with. The other, the other thing that I saw was that um, it eliminated the problem of burnout. I, one of the reasons I'd left my psychotherapy practice was that I was feeling very burnt out. I, was, I would end the day feeling very tired, uh, always feeling like I was trying to stay one step ahead diagnostically and in my mind, you know, making sure I did the right thing and wondering how I treated this problem because at the po that point, all the problems that people brought in looked different to me. And when I saw that everything was created in the same way and it was all coming from the same place via our use of these principles of mind, thought, and consciousness, that really simplified work. But also it just freed me to just quiet down and listen really deeply and listen to the wisdom that was coming up in the person because I really saw that health was always there, wisdom was always there. And I, I often say this, that psychotherapy became for me a meditation practice because my mind was just quiet and present. And I would end my days feeling energized and touched and spiritually alive and, and just so, so enriched by what had happened in the day. My body would be tired from sitting in a chair for 10 hours, but, but psychologically and spiritually, I was anything but tired. And, and so the practice of working from this understanding really, really changed everything. So it changed my life. It changed my understanding of psychology and the connection between psychology and spirituality and it 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 changed the people I was working with um, it, it, it was really personally and professionally life-changing but in a beautiful quiet slowly evolving kind of way and so uh, you know I therapy for me what I really did was uh, every every client who would come in we would, the first session, I would just listen really deeply as I always did as a psychologist and really try to understand their story and what was important to them. But I was always listening with my ear tuned toward where's the wisdom coming through? Where's the truth that they've experienced? Where the love, where's the love that has been coming through them into life? And I would say to them, so here's where, where I've heard where you're struggling, but I also heard this. And, and inevitably, the response would be, you heard that? And then we'd be off and running in a different direction. Second session, I sat with every single client and watched one of the SID videos. So I have watched uh, a number of the videos probably several hundred times because I watched them with my clients. And I was just astonished that every time I would listen, I would hear something new. And then we would just start talking, well, what did you hear? Here's what I heard. And I would have them read one of Sid's books, usually The Missing Link or The Enlightened Gardener. And then we would just be off on this beautiful conversation about 
life and the logic of the three principles, and I would watch them have their own insights about their problems, uh, their own insights about how to do life. And, and that was very beautiful. So I don't, I don't know that there's, um, I don't know that there's one magic thing, but I, but I think I would stick with what Sid told me is just share what you see. And my experience taught me that that really was enough because I did see in the measurements that I was taking that people were moving forward far quicker and with much greater depth than they had with anything I had done previously. Well, that's just such a story of hope to me on all levels. And so, you know, you make it sound so simple and that's what we really want to get back to, I think, is the simplicity. It's not that it doesn't, you know, it's not, well, anyway, I've said enough. That was beautiful. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. You know, one of my biggest fears as a, as a psychologist who loved creative work, creative work with clients, was that it was going to be not very creative. And I remember even saying to Sid, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I remember even saying to him, Sid, so what am I going to do? I'm going to sit there every session and say, mind, thought, and consciousness, mind, thought, and consciousness, mind, thought, and consciousness. And he chuckled. And, and he said, well, just, just see, just see what happens. And of course, I saw what happened was that as you're sitting having these conversations, people bring up the most creative metaphors for what they're seeing. And, and so, yeah, I, I didn't experience any, anything negative about leaving behind all kinds of techniques and all kinds of prior understandings because of the beauty of what replaced that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. As, as I said, it's simplicity and um, we need to keep these as, as, you know, reasonably brief. So thank you. Uh, yeah. We can't, uh, it's been lovely to meet you. As we said earlier on, I don't think I've met you before personally and it's great to get to know you a little bit and really, really looking forward to spending time with you at Viva. Hope for you Same here. the Viva vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I'm very excited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.